All right, first and foremost, I want to give all glory on it and praise unto my power, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai. I want to give acknowledgement to the elders of uh, GMS, who I do learn from, right, uh, with today's lesson, right? I want to get right into it. This is the message for today, right? Isaiah 61 and 1, but I'm going to read it in the NLT. Um, you know, I just like how it sounds, you know, uh, for certain things in the NLT. <clears throat> it says, Isaiah 61 and 1, it says, The spirit of Adawan, the spirit of the sovereign Adawan is upon me. For I don't want to have anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to comfort the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty, to proclaim captives will be released and prisoners will be freed. Right. That's the point. And who's the poor man? Right. Like it says, in, um, you know, uh, I think it's in the book of James. I'm not sure, but it says the heavenly father have chosen a poor, a poor of this world, uh, rich in faith. And then also right here, it says um, <clears throat> in the book of Revelation. Chapter three and verse ten, it says, <clears throat> "Where is it? Three and nine, two and nine, right?" So it says, "Revelation two and nine. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan." So who is the heavenly? Who is Yahweh Shai talking about? He's talking about the nation of Israel, right? Chiefly the elect, man, right? Because even though we're in poverty in this society. We're still rich. Why? We're rich in faith and we have redemption coming to us, man. So these beautiful things, right? Isaiah 61 and 1, I'm going to read it again. It says, the spirit of the sovereign Adawan is upon me. For Adawan hath anointed me to bring good, good news to the poor. He hath sent me to comfort the brokenhearted, to proclaim the captives will be released and prisoners will be free. So that's the point where we're about to be released. The year of our redeemed is come, man, right? And it's very, very much uh, uh, so nigh. And that's, and that's why our brothers need to be in that spirit of, Push, pushing that uh, 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 hasten in the day spirit uh, because we, we want the kingdom, man, right? So we got to continue to hasten, hasten the day, right? So verse two, it says, he has sent me to tell uh, tell those who mourn that the time of Hadawan's favor has come, right? When what? When we get redeemed, we get everything that's been promised to us and it is coming, right? All those good things that you hear about in the scriptures, which I don't want, I don't want to write this I'm going to grab it for y'all, man. All right, it's some real, real good news, man. There's great things coming to us, and you have to remember that, man. Right? The rest of these people, you know, the, of course, the wicked of our nation, of course, they're going to get it, you know, on the second go around, right? But we want to be uh, uh, of those who are uh, uh, of the first fruits, man, right? We don't we, we don't take part in that second death, uh, as it talks about in Revelation, the 20th chapter, right? Which are those uh, ICBM hypersonic missiles, right? That's going to uh, uh, burn up America, Babylon, you know, cause that lake of fire to happen, right? So read, read, read in verse two, it says he has sent me to tell those who mourn. Why would you be mourning? Right. Because you're sighing and crying for all the abominations that be done in the midst of this place, man. Right. All right. Esau, you know, he's seeking to wear out the uh, wear out the saints. Right. And we see all of these different you know things happening here, man. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of uh, uh, trials and tribulations in the society, man. Right. That's why we mourn it. And we and, and we desire. And now that we know well, uh, how, how things are supposed to be ran, we want it. We want we want that, man. And we, we we truly desire it, so that's why we mourning in this place, right? If you know you a king, and then you and, and you uh, uh exiled from your from 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 ruling in your land, you are gonna be mourning until you get that crown back, right? So it's the same thing, right? And so we see our I don't want uh so like until we see I don't want now with Yahweh Shai, you know, <clears throat> and ruling the earth and governing the earth and everything being at peace, you know, it's gonna be it's, it's like damn man, this this thing is second rate. I believe I forgot who it was, but it was like the elders of Israel. When they seen the temple build it, you know, uh, uh, I think it was like the second or second or third time. I can't remember exactly which time it was built, but that the ones that seen the glory of the first, the first temple, they was like, they, they started crying because they was like, dang, man, this ain't nothing compared to what it was before. That's how we are. We know how it's supposed to be. Right. So ultimately, what we're looking for is for everlasting rest, everlasting peace, man. Right? When the whole earth is at rest, everything is at peace and governed by the uh, 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 the one who is supposed to be in power. And who is that, man? Yahweh Shai. As we read in Sirach, the 10th chapter, which I'm going to go ahead and grab that. Sirach chapter 10 and verse uh, verse 1, it says, A wise judge will instruct his people in the government of a prudent man is well ordered. Who's a prudent man? What does prudence mean? It means wisdom, right? And who's wise? Yahweh Shai. So like you. <clears throat> who's, who, who's wise? Yahweh Shai. And him, you know, basically being wise, you know, a, a, a prudent, a prudent ruler. Right. What's going to happen? His government, his society, his kingdom is going to be well ordered. Right. And like it says in Proverbs, the 29th chapter, what's going to happen? Right. 
with Proverbs 29, and I'm going to go ahead and grab that. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 2, it says, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn, right? People are mourning. Why? Because Esau, Edom is in power. He's an unrightful, unfit ruler and does not and does not know how to rule the people, right? You see our forefather, King Solomon, he prayed for wisdom, you know, to the heavenly father. So that way he can govern so great of a people. Why? Because, you know, through the proof, like, like we just read in Sarek 10 and 1, through the prudence, uh, it's like him. A wise judge will instruct his people and the government of a prudent man is well ordered. And King Solomon knew that. So that's why he asked the Heavenly Father for wisdom. Right. So that way he can govern so great of a people. So, he, so that way he can govern the Heavenly Father's people, man, which is us. Yashra Allah. Right. And we see that, you know, we, we understand that Yahweh Shai, he is King Solomon through the reincarnation, man. Right. And when he comes back, he's going to have complete wisdom, man. He's going to have, you know, all that knowledge, man, everything. He's going to know exactly how to govern the earth, man, and how it should be. And it's going to be at rest and at peace. And that's what we want. Because even with the other nations, man, we're not just looking to, uh, you know, just, just be demons to them. After that thousand year period of, of, of captivity that they have to pay for all that they done did to us, we're going to be at peace. They're going to go back to their own land. They're going to be tributaries unto us, right? And, 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 you know, when we roll up in the land, you know, we're going to be all stars and stuff in, the, in a land, but it ain't going to be no strife between us. Everything's just going to be peaceful. You know, hey, how you doing, Elam? You know, Esau, he's going to be up out of there because, you know, in the book of Obadiah, you know, he Esau going to be wiped away. But, you know, Cush, uh, uh, Elam, you're going to the land of Moab. Hey, how's it going? You know, they entreat us well over there. That's how it's going to be. Right. And, and, and me personally, I, I would love that. I'm not just trying to go in their land and just whip their asses all the time. Like, that's. Like, come on, man. I'm, I'm a man of peace, you know, but I get down when I got to get down, you know, and that's how that's how our forefathers was. And that's how Yahweh Shai is, man. You know, ultimately, he he wants the earth to be governed in peace. Now, we're going to be at the top being Yashra Allah, being Israelites. Right. But everybody else, they're going to be under us. But we still going to be at peace. Right. So reading on verse two, Sirach 10 and two, it says as the judge of the people is himself. So are his officers and what manner of man the ruler of the city is, such are all they that dwell therein. Right. And who's in who, who's who's governing the city now? Who's governing the earth right now? Right. You saw Edom. And that's why everybody on the earth, not everybody, but, you know, dang near majority of the people on the earth is just complete demons, man. Eating unlawful foods, committing uh, unlawful sexual acts, you know, uh, 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 adultery, you know, all, 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 you know, all those different types of things. BC, all those things, man. All right, people doing those types of things. Why? Because Esau Edom is in power and he participates in those things. He allows those things. He justifies those things. Homosexuality, right? All of those things, man. Right? So you see, uh, so 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 whatever man, the, uh, uh, the, the whatever, whatever mindset that the ruler of the city is in, right? That's the way the people going to be. Verse three: An unwise king destroyeth his people, but the, through the prudence of them which are in authority, the city shall be inhabited. And what's that? Yahweh Shai being in rulership because. Uh, 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 through his prudence, he's going to have the city be inhabited where, you know, it's not chemtrails all over the earth. You get to actually enjoy your children, eat clean food, have drinking water that's actually sweet. Right. Right. Not this, not this crappy mineral, uh, whatever type of water they, uh, what do they call it? Uh, the spigot water. You're drinking the spigot water, all, put all these chemicals in there. What are you going to see? And people open up their faucet and like the like the uh, like the spigot uh, spigot water on, on, on fire and it and it's showing you got it got chemicals in there, man. What you think it's doing to your body, man? Right. Verse four: The power of the earth is in the hand of Hadawan, and in due time he will set over one that is profitable. Right, and that's the point, man. Right, and in due time, the heavenly Father he's gonna uh, he's gonna send Yahweh Shai, which is very very soon as we can see through measuring the time diligently in itself. We see that Yahweh Shai. He's on the brink of coming, man, because Esau, Edom is falling. He's falling, man. He is falling. And his kingdom is, is, is almost at an end, man. Truly. All right. So I'm going to go back to Isaiah 61. It says to all who mourn in Israel, he will give a crown of beauty for ashes. Right. So for all you. And what do you use ashes for? Usually in the ancient world, people would throw ashes on upon their head and wear sackcloth when they were mourning. Right. This is this is where our people are at right now. Our people are mourning at this particular time. So he's going to give us beauty for ashes, a joyous blessing instead of mourning, festive praise instead of despair. Our people are so used to despair in the society, so used to things being taken away from them in the society. When we get something good, we got to We got to We got to question whether, you know, something something coming along with that. You know, like, oh, are you sure this is you know what I'm saying? 
Like, it, 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 we just so used to having just negative things happen to us here, man. We just so used to being hurt and, and, and just stepped on and stepped over in this society. But for all of that pain that we had to endure here, the Heavenly Father, he's going to give us what? Fest of praise instead of despair. And the righteousness, it's like in their righteousness, they will be like great oaks. That's like that Ha'adawan has planted for his own glory. What is a great oak? That's a great big tree, right? And I'm reading in Isaiah the 65th chapter, right? We actually read that our people will live as long as trees, man. And you got some trees that are 5,000, 10,000 years old, man, right? So we're going to be living long, right? And enjoying the things that we actually uh, 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 done labor for, which ultimately we're not going to be doing no labor, uh, no type of labor. We're going to be put, uh, putting our service to work and that's going to be our labor. You see what I'm saying? So what they do, that's what we're going to, we're going to uh, uh, reap the benefits from that. All right here, I had this in Isaiah, the 65th chapter. Let me see where is that? Isaiah 65. Hmm. <clears throat> Verse 19, it says, I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people. And the voice of weeping shall no more be heard in her, nor the voice of crying. Why? Because everybody is going to be rejoicing of the nation of Israel, man. All of those things that you suffer right now, the heartaches and pains, trials and tribulations, right? Setbacks, all of those different things. That's going to be a thing of the past, man. That's what we got to look forward to, right? And that's what you get first fruits of if you endure, as long as you continue to keep fighting and don't give up. Right. That's the best thing, man. Whatever it is that you have to particularly go through, you got to endure that, man. Pray to the Heavenly Father, trust in him that he going to deliver and see you through that. You know, whatever your situation may be. And that on the on, on the flip end, as long as you endure through it, you're going to be good at the end. man. All right. Because we see that this whole society is about to crumble down any moment, any moment. It's, it's come. It's crumbling down. So what you want to do is make sure you're on the right side of what, you know, what's about to come down. So you want to make sure that you're on the right side of the Heavenly Father. So when things and judgments start flying out, you cool. You see what I'm saying? That's the mindset you want. Right. And that's the great. That's a good mindset to be in. Righteous mindset. Verse 20. There shall no more. Uh, there shall no more thence an infant of days, nor an old man that have not filled his days. Right. So that's the point. It's not going to be any more infants that, that or, or kids that, that, that are dying young or, or, or an old man that has not filled his days. Like he ain't even get to live his full life. Right. Dying at 40 or 50. Right. For the child shall die at 100 years old. But the sinner shall be 100 years old shall be a curse. Right. So what does that mean? Right. I'm going to read it in LC. It says no longer will adults die before they have lived a full life. No longer will people be considered old at 100. Only the curse will die that young. Why? Because we're going to have those glorified bodies, man. Right? We're going to have those glorified bodies that the Heavenly Father, uh, while Yahweh Shai is going to bestow upon us. And with those glorified bodies, we're going to live long. Right? Long, long lives. Right? It says only the curse will die that young. Why? Because the heathens, they're not going to enjoy these glorified bodies because that's the covenant for Israel. And we read that in, in, in Jeremiah, the, uh, the 31st chapter. That's the new covenant where these new bodies, they won't be able to sin. Right. The instant it's going to be instinctual for us to keep the law. You see what I'm saying? We're not going to have to teach every man his neighbor or every man, you know, uh, no, saying no, no to Heavenly Father, saying repent, repent. Or you know what I mean? No, we ain't going to have to do that. Why? Because everybody, all of our people are going to be all righteous. Like it says in Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 22. What does it say? It says, uh, it's like in verse 21, it says, thy people shall be all righteous. They shall inherit the land forever. Not just a little bit. And then we get in there and then we get back out. No, it says forever. Right. It says the branch of my planting, the work of my hands that I may be glorified. Right. That's the point. Right. It says a little one shall become a thousand and a small one, a strong nation. I, I don't want to hasten it in this time. So the heavenly father is hastening it. Yahweh Shai is hastening it. So why shouldn't we hasten the day as well? Being in the same spirit as Yahweh Shai. Right. I don't want to know Yahweh Shai. Right. So that's the point, man. We want to hasten the day because we want this to happen where one of us, one of our children shall become a thousand from one from just one child. That one child is probably going to branch off to make a thousand other children, grandchildren for you. And then I'd say if you have a thousand children, I can't I don't even know the math on that. It says we're going to be, the, be as the sands of the sea and innumerable. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't count the sand. Right. So this is what we got to look forward to, man. You know. These are beautiful, beautiful uh, promises, man. All right. I, I want to go more into the, uh, the the whole John, but um, let me see. It says um, Isaiah 65 and verse 21. 
It says, uh, and they shall build a house, and they shall build houses and inhabit them, and they shall uh, and they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. Then we're not going to be planting nothing. Our servants are going to be doing it, but we're going to be taking the credit for it, rightfully so. Right, verse twenty-two. It says, they shall not build and another inhabit. So you're not going to be building a house and somebody else going to live in it, like we did with the White House, right? Like Jake was building the White House, and then we don't even stay in there, right? It says, they shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat eat, right? For as the days of a tree are the days of my people, right? So long, 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 right? It says, <clears throat> and my elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. How? Because, you know, ultimately we're going to be putting our servants to work and we're going to enjoy all the fruits of it, right? It says, they shall not labor in vain nor bring forth trouble for they, and it's like it, for they are the seed of the blessed of Hadawan and their offspring with them. So us and our children are going to be blessed. Why? Because like it says in Deuteronomy 30, 30th chapter, I have set before thee uh, life and death, blessing and cursings. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. And with our new bodies, we're naturally going to keep the law. So with, when the Heavenly Father has us keep the law, those promises, are uh, uh, those blessings in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, apply to us in that particular time. You see what I'm saying? So 28, uh, 28 I think it's 28 down to 14 or 15. But that's the, the uh, those those uh, uh, curses are going to come up off of us. They're going to go upon our enemies. Like it says, I believe that's Deuteronomy 30, chapter 7, verse they're going to go upon our enemies. See, it says the curse are going to die that young. And then with us, on the flip side, now we're going to be good, right? Verse 24, it says, and it shall come to pass that before they call. This is my, this is my favorite part of it, right? It says, Isaiah 65 and 24, and, and they shall come to pass. And it shall, and it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And will and slack it. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. That's the, ooh, listen to that in the um, NLT. It says, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm a little amped up right now. <laughs> I got it too. It says, um. I will answer them before they even call to me while they are still talking about their needs. I will go ahead and answer their prayers. That's the point, man. That's beautiful. How, how beautiful is that? You going ahead. You still talking. And he like, yeah, yeah, I got you. And he already bring you what you praying about. You still praying about. You didn't even get to it yet. And he just bring it to you. That's beautiful, man. That's how much the heavenly father want to bless us, man. If that don't make you happy, if that don't make you smile, like it's like, dang, man. So why do y'all about see me outside, man? Call William like y'all about see me outside, right? It says, it says, um, I will answer, I, I will answer them before they even call to me. While they are still talking about their needs, I will go ahead and answer their prayers. Verse 20, uh, 25, the wolf and the lamb. Will, yes, that's the point, man. Right? Um, it says, in those days, no one will be hurt or destroyed of my on my holy mountain. I, how the one have spoken it. Right? Yes, that's the point, man. Oh, excuse me, the heavenly Father about to bless us, man. We just gotta continue to uh, we just gotta continue to uh, to rock out, man. Just just do what the heavenly Father is telling us to do, so that when that time comes, man, we are gonna be good, man. We ain't got nothing to worry about. <clears throat> yeah, let me see. Uh, Jeremiah thirty. I'm gonna uh, end it off on this. I don't write the Zah verse ten. It says, "Therefore fear thou not, uh, not O my servant Jacob, save I one. Neither be dismayed, O Israel, for lo, I will save thee from afar." And I see from the land of their captivity and Jacob shall return and shall be in rest and be quiet and none shall make him afraid. That's the point, man. Right. So, look, man, we got a lot coming uh, coming to us. You know, we just got to endure these tough times right now. I know it's tough, but um, it's going to be all good, man. And, and we can obviously see that, man. You know, we putting in this time now so that way we can reap the benefits later, man. So, you know, I don't want to write the Zion. You should see hearted true believers were edified, exhorted and comforted. I'm going to give all glory on and praise unto my power, Yahweh, by Shem Yahweh Shalom to all you brothers and sisters, man, that are, that are sincere. Shalom.